biggest city, the smartest people, the biggest idea. When I first heard our first speaker, Guy Miller, I was really struck by his drive and his uh, candor. Uh, he's involved in the startup of uh, two new pharmaceutical research and development companies that are playing the venture capital game, and uh, that sometimes can lead to really crazy riches. But at the same time, he's a guy who's deeply interested in public policy, and he spends a good deal of his time on pro bono activity. Would you come up here, please? Guy Miller and Ben Sanders. This is Guy, and the one in the on shorts the is Ben. On the way to the wings. All right. <laughs> this October, Ben Saunders will try to trek unassisted to the South Pole and back. 1,800 miles, four months. No one has ever made the long journey before. Saunders will need every bit of energy his cells can muster, energy powered by a mysterious engine known as the mitochondria. Inside our cells, uh, there's a specialized area that makes energy, and that specialized area is called a mitochondria. These tiny powerhouses provide nearly all the cell's energy. If your mitochondria don't work, cells don't make energy, and normally, for, for people who have mitochondrial diseases, they'll die because they run out of gas. 12-year-old Chelsea Lane has a mitochondrial disease called Friedrich's ataxia. Hey, Mommy. How are you? Good. As a very young child, Chelsea learned to walk and even run. But gradually, it all began to change. By the age of four, Chelsea began to need the assistance of both a walker and ultimately a wheelchair to be able to get from point to point. The heartbreaking element of these diseases is uh, they don't stop. They're progressive. They can affect every single vital organ in the body. And in Chelsea's case, outside of her spirit, uh, which is well intact, they have affected every part of her body. So she has had problems with her vision. She's had problems with her heart, with her spine, and her skeletal muscular system. Ben Saunders is dedicating his seemingly impossible journey to Chelsea Lane. The Human Energy Project is dedicating itself to finding her cure. The mission of the Human Energy Project is to find cures for energy impairment diseases. Uh, they affect over 100,000 children worldwide, and right now there are no treatments or cures for these diseases. The Human Energy Project may find new treatments in just five years and find a cure in 10. Yeah, good morning. Wow, thank you. Um, for me, the, the element of, of exploration, and, and there is still genuine exploration, is human rather than geographical. Um, the thing that excites me and the thing that I think in a way unites Guy and I is that I'm excited about chipping away at the boundaries of, of what I call human limits, uh, psychology, physiology, and technology. Last spring, uh, some of these photos were from an expedition last spring. I, I skied alone from uh, the coast of Siberia to the geographic North Pole. Uh, the North Pole is slap bang in the middle of the sea, so you're skiing over the frozen crust of the Arctic Ocean. There are, there are no maps. Um, the ice is changing from one day to the next. And it's getting tougher year on year because the climate is changing, it's getting warmer. Um, so it's, it's a challenging journey. And on uh, the first week of that expedition, um, I had the, one of the toughest days of my entire life. I, I got up in the morning, uh, minus 48 was the ambient, minus 48 degrees C was the ambient air temperature. You get wind chill on top of that. Uh, I got up, took the tent down, it was still dark very early in the spring. Uh, I skied north for seven hours. Um, the, the sledge weight, combined weight of two sledges was just over 400 pounds. Uh, I put the tent up in the evening. I got the GPS out and I was two and a half miles further south than when I'd started. I, I literally couldn't keep up with the, the drift of the sea ice, this sort of crust of ice. So, so I think, and Guy, I think in a minute, we'll talk about the, this, this idea of an energy spectrum. And of course, people like Chelsea and people like Frazier, who's here somewhere in the audience, um, are at, at the opposite end of the spectrum to me. But I think we've got this sort of common, th th there's something that binds us. Um, and I know, well, I think I know, uh, just a, a tiny, tiny bit about what it might feel like um, to face those kind of challenges and, and to wake up uh, exhausted and, and drifting backwards and, and feeling you know, helpless. This is what I, I do for a living. This is what I do for fun. I know that the next expedition is, is four months, and then I go home, and everything is fine again. 
Um, true heroes, true heroism, uh, to me, are people like Chelsea, who day in, day out are facing a challenge that I could, you know, I, I can't even imagine. Um, I'm setting out to make the first ever return journey on foot from the coast of Antarctica, the same starting point as Captain Scott and, and um, Ernest Shackleton 93 years ago. And the plan is to ski to the pole, turn around and ski back, 1,800 miles. Uh, it'll take nearly four months. It's the longest unsupported polar journey in history. Um, that's the plan, but my hope is that through Guy and through my association with the Human Energy Project, it, it's going to be a lot more than, than two guys skiing along uh, in somewhere cold and lonely. Um, I'm going to leave it there while we're still on green, but uh, and hand you over to Guy, but um, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll take a seat yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know, nature's doing all sorts of magical experiments, uh, and uh, it's not uh, perfect, and it's a trial by our system. And uh, when nature likes something, it, it sort of puts it in the greatest hits category, uh, like Pink Floyd, and keeps playing it again and again. And, and you know, energy is like that. Um, the, the whole energy gig of nature uh, can be traced all the way back to these little beastie uh, bacteria that kind of evaded our organism. Uh, and we call that a mitochondria, and these things are, are fantastic. They convert the food we eat into oxygen, and, uh, and they make energy. Uh, but we really live in a continuum, and, and at one end of the spectrum, uh, we've got, uh, you know, really miracles like, uh, like Ben and, and Tony Saunders, and, uh, Ben Saunders and Tony Hale and others. And at the other end, we've got some of nature's more unfortunate experiments, uh, which is uh, Chelsea Lane and, and Friedrich's ataxia. Um, Right now, uh, we really look at this as a continuum, and to the extent that we can really understand more about what makes uh, someone like, like Ben tick, uh, we can really begin to dissect apart that fundamental vocabulary around energy. And what we're really looking at uh, is, um, is a little bit of a problem that exists now in that uh, normally we, we'd love to be up in, in this box where there's a, a real call to action when both government and foundations and corporations see that there's a need. But uh, right now we're really uh, down at this bottom. Uh, there's over 100,000 children and young adults worldwide who have energy impairment diseases. And if we broaden that umbrella, uh, we'll put underneath it things like ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's disease, which affects literally millions of people. So this is a huge problem, and uh, we believe it deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. Uh, ultimately, we want to create what we'd like to call a virtuous cycle, where there's enough attention, both in the private and public sectors, that these problems are not only posed as being commercially attractive, but also uh, important. The gap that uh, that Human Energy Project wants to fill is what we call a translational gap. It's taking those fantastic uh, inspirational discoveries that frequently occur in academia that are well, with, uh, well beyond the means of venture capitalists to fund and really bringing those forward as being economically viable uh, projects that corporations will see as being worthy of, uh, of investing in. Um, that bridge, uh, where the Human Energy Project hopes to fill is, is a very important one. Uh, we want to raise awareness around these diseases, and we want to build that virtual network. And uh, I hope to talk to uh, many people during the breaks about uh, some ideas they might have, and I'm sure there'll be quite a few. Thank you very much. Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com.